Hi everyone, Alexa here from the blog, theduvalhomestead.com. Today I'm gonna to share with you 15 things that I've learned as a first time mom and a two month baby and postpartum update. been following my blog for a long time, you know that I normally post farm to table recipes and homemade natural living. But today I'm going to be talking about motherhood and babies and postpartum because I think that a lot of people who read my blog are new moms or going to be new moms. These are just some things that I learned that were not really in the books. More of just things that you would not think of when you are preparing to have your first baby. So I hope that this helps for the people who are expecting a baby or maybe just you've already had kids and this is just a fun watch for you. So number one, you will need lots of towels, things like washable pads for the bed and floor and couch because you never want to set down a newborn on a surface that can't get wet. And this is something that I just Again, it's small, but I didn't really expect it. They're kind of like little water bottles. You breastfeed them and then you tip them over and sometimes the milk comes out. Sometimes they wet their diaper. They're constantly kind of eating, peeing, pooping. The cycle is very quick. Having a lot of towels on hand, especially at night for us because we sleep together in bed and not only is she constantly kind of leaking in other places, but so I have BTMI. I'm leaking in places and so having washable pads on your bed or towels nearby just a lot more than you might think is very important. I will link the pads that I use for our bed. Actually this, there's one behind me right here so we change her on this. So if you're ever going to set a baby down just make sure they're on something that can get wet. These are washable which I love. I actually bought them for our home birth and they, even my husband has said, it's a good thing you bought those pads because we have I think four of them and they are just the best and you can wash them. Okay, number two, breastfeeding takes a lot of practice. When I was preparing to have Allison, I figured breastfeeding was just gonna be very natural and you know, it's just gonna happen. And it did, basically a few minutes after I delivered her, she just latched right on. But just because she's getting milk doesn't mean breastfeeding is going well. I mean, that is the most important part of breastfeeding, but you really have to work on that latch. It takes practice for you and it takes practice for the baby. And so you wanna to talk to your practitioner. In our case, we had a midwife who really helped us um, get a good latch. And once you're good at that, it takes just a few weeks and um, you're smooth sailing from there. But those first couple weeks of getting used to it are tough because it just takes practice. Number three, breastfeeding is great, but there's this other thing that I did not expect having to do after you breastfeed and that is burping. I've of course heard of burping a baby, but I never realized how important it was to get that burp out. And it can take anywhere from a minute to five minutes to 10. And even if they do burp, they might burp again later or it might come up later. Burping is a whole nother thing. So when you're thinking about your life as a, as a new mom with a newborn baby, consider the fact that you're gonna feed and then there's burping and then you can, maybe they'll nap or not. Number four is slow down and know you're doing exactly what you're supposed to do, even if it doesn't feel like it. And what I mean by that is if you're somebody who goes a million miles an hour and I am kind of one of those people who, from the moment I wake up to when I go to bed, everything is kind of on a schedule and I like to fill my day, I like to be busy if you're one of those people as well, you might feel a little bit antsy with a newborn baby because it's a lot of sitting and nursing and holding and then they nap, but it's not for that long yet with a newborn. So find comfort in the fact that everything you're doing, even if you're just sitting on the couch and nursing or holding, that's exactly what you're supposed to be doing. And so don't let those thoughts of, I'm, I should be cleaning the kitchen or I should be working out or I should be doing X, Y, Z, just don't let those at all come into your brain because whatever you're doing for the baby is exactly what you should be doing. Number five, have someone cook and clean for you. It is absolutely necessary in the first couple of weeks. So whether you have a natural birth or you're a cesarean or whatever kind of birth you have, even if it goes super well, 
you still need to recover and you really can't leave that bed for a while. And so make sure you have people cooking and cleaning for you, doing your laundry, at least for those first couple of weeks. My husband has taken over that role for us. I'll talk more about that in the two month update, kind of how we live our life um, now. That's super important. I also made a video and a post about five freezer meals you can make before your baby comes. And that, I can't even tell you how important that was to have food ready to go for the moment after she was born because we were hungry and having that food ready was just so good. Number six is, this is a postpartum kind of tip, but buy a lot of pads, and I mean kind of feminine pads. I knew that you would need pads for bleeding after the birth, but I really kind of underestimated the amount I was going to need by probably like six times. I had to reorder several times on Amazon the pads that I liked. So I actually got to a point one time when I called my mom, I said, I need you to go get me some pads because I just didn't understand how fast you would go through them. And I did have a pretty safe, natural, nothing super out of the ordinary birth. Number seven, have two sets of diaper gear, one for your house and one for to go. So you don't have to keep packing a diaper bag every time you leave or come home. So we do cloth diapering. So this might be more important for that situation uh, because we are doing a lot of laundry, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. But whether you're doing the disposable diapers or cloth diapers, just have your backpack kind of ready to go for when you wanna leave the house and have a separate set of stuff for at home because that way you're not having to repack and pack. Basically, when you have a baby, it's very hard to use your hands unless you're wearing this wrap, which is definitely a good tip is to get a wrap. But even with the wrap with a the newborn, they can't hold their head up. It's just a little hard to do things, at least how you used to do them. So having that backpack ready to go and having two separate sets of things is very important. Number eight, keep eating and drinking the same good foods as your pregnancy because it's all going through the breast milk. So I remember my diet in my pregnancy was very strict. It was full of protein and bone broth and fermented food and tea, lots of really healthy things. And I felt like I needed to keep that up right after the birth. So make sure you have more of that food on hand, especially after your birth, to nourish your body because although you're no longer pregnant, you're still feeding the baby through the breast milk. So it's not like you just have your baby and then you go back to eating whatever you're eating before, which hopefully wasn't that bad to begin with. So if you are planning on having a baby and you're not pregnant yet, you want to really clean up your diet now anyway. So just get used to eating really good food and quite frankly, Clean, healthy food just tastes better than fast food or whatever anyway. So food is important. <laughs> Number nine, make or buy a lot of laundry detergent. So you can do diapers, towels, clothes several times a day. Assume the baby goes through at least two outfits a day and sometimes just constant diaper changes. If you have not had a baby yet and you're like, we were you just my husband and I, that laundry kind of routine that I had, assume that's times like four. <laughs> For that first stage at least for us because like i said a lot of towels you can see behind me next to my bed i've got some towels i've got this washable pad here we're also doing cloth diapers so the amount of laundry is just insane ironically right before our birth i was out of laundry detergent and the day i gave birth i was planning on making more i was thinking i'll make bulk laundry detergent that was the day i ended up giving birth so that was a bit of a problem about four days postpartum i, I was in the laundry room mixing up which I wish I had not done. I wish I could have done that earlier. So just have so much laundry detergent on hand. And on that note, have a lot of everything on hand, extra trash bags, extra Ziploc bags, just kitchen utensils and food. When you're getting towards that time when you're gonna have the baby, just really load up because you do not want to have to go to the store. That's the last thing you wanna do after you have your baby. Number 10, never set a newborn down on a surface that can't get wet. I think I said this one earlier. Number 11, give yourself plenty of time to recover from the birth. This goes for everything from small tasks like doing laundry or even showering. Just don't expect to get much done in those first couple of weeks. If you go two days without a shower, that's okay. If you are not doing the laundry that much, that's okay. Just give yourself a lot of time because you don't wanna make your recovery worse by 
overdoing it. Number 12, this kind of goes on the same point as the first one, don't try to get back to exercising, even walking for a while. Be okay with sitting and doing nothing at all. Buy a podcast on Audible, read a book. Just don't try to rush things like breastfeeding. These all kind of have the same theme of just pay attention to your baby and that's really the best thing you can be doing. Number 13, don't worry about keeping things super clean. One, two, or three bits of spit up don't bother me anymore. I remember when we first had her and she, you know, wet, soaked through a diaper or spit up. It was like, oh, we gotta wash this now. Well, now I'm like, all right, I'll wash it after this happens five times because it just doesn't bother me anymore. So just get used to that. And like I said, have towels everywhere and that just helps clean up any messes. Number 14 is wear a wrap like I'm doing now. People always said that wraps allow you to get things done with your hands. Babies don't like being put down, at least mine doesn't, so wearing a wrap lets me hold her while I also do things with my hands. Every baby is different, but every time we put her down, she cries, and when I have the wrap on, we can just put her in and out throughout the day. She kind of naps a little bit. Sometimes she's active. Right now, she's napping, which is great. Lastly, number 15 is coconut oil solves everything. Dry skin, flaky skin, after a bath, for a lotion, for a diaper rash, so many great uses. In fact, I have not used any single commercial product on her yet. It's just been coconut oil and homemade, not even homemade soap. I think I maybe used soap one time. Coconut oil has been amazing, especially when they're a newborn because their skin gets so dry because it was in the womb for so long that it comes out and they just get really flaky skin. So having a, you know, a bottle of that pump coconut oil on hand is really nice. I also put it for her diaper area, like, Especially now that she's getting rolls kind of in the creases because that area, you know, you need to make sure it's all clean. And I use coconut oil there because it just helps keep everything smooth and she's never had a diaper rash. So I actually did make up a diaper rash cream for her and I haven't even had to use it. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you a two month update. Allison is seven weeks now, so it's not quite two months yet, but I was actually supposed to make this a one month update, but obviously I have not been able to shoot this for a few weeks now, so it's going to be a two month update. So I'll first start with our daily routine, what it looks like now. It kind of is similar to when she's a newborn. We basically just, our lives revolve around her. Now, my husband and I are both on a parental leave right now from our jobs, and we have several months of paid leave, which is awesome. I can't imagine what it was like back in the day when people didn't get any leave. I know our state provides a pretty good parental leave policy, so, Depending on where you are, you might be watching this and thinking that maybe you don't have that. If you don't, then just finding help is super important. But anyway, our routine is we wake up and she has a lot of, she likes to eat a lot in the morning and then she usually will have a late morning nap and then she'll do more feedings in the afternoon, have an afternoon nap, more feedings late afternoon and then in the evening, another nap more feedings and then go to bed. So that's basically the schedule. Now when she was a newborn, it was a little f more frequently than that. Like she was eating every hour or every two hours. I do not time her eating schedule. A lot of people ask you when you have a newborn, how often are they eating? How often are they pooping? How many diapers a day? And I never honestly kept track of that because it was so much. I always would say, I don't know, but she eats constantly. Or I don't know, but she poops constantly. Or whatever, because I just was never concerned about it. She weighed eight pounds at birth. At her one month appointment, she weighed almost 11 pounds. So she had gained, she was 10 pounds, 14 ounces at her one month appointment. So she had gained almost three pounds in a month, which is a lot. Now she's two months and we haven't weighed her and I meant to weigh her before this, but maybe by the time I write the blog post, which I'll link below, we will weigh her. But I think she weighs a lot because she eats quite a bit. So nursing is obviously going well because she's just getting nice and plump. So because this is our first baby, my husband and I have learned a lot about how to be parents and we are still learning every single day. One thing that has been very successful for us recently is being able to pass her off. So what I mean by that is when I first had her, I pr basically took care of her 24 seven. I didn't even know how to take care of her, so I definitely couldn't tell John how to take care of her. And considering I was feeding her, there was not much he could do. So for the first couple of weeks, basically it was me and Allison and John took care of everything else. So the cooking, the cleaning, everything that needed to be done in our life, John was responsible for and I was just responsible for keeping her alive. And that worked really well. 
after a few weeks, we have figured out that the best way to kind of share and get some time off from her to get other things done is to wear this wrap. So John actually wears this wrap a lot. He also wears the, the Solly Baby wrap that we have too. And whenever in the morning after I feed her for a few hours and play with her, and while we're doing the morning routine and getting all of her feedings in, he will go for a run, he'll cook breakfast, he'll kind of do his own thing that he likes to do. And then once I get her to go to sleep in the morning, then I give her to him in the wrap and he will just hold her for another two hours while she sleeps and then I can go kind of do my own thing. So on the topic of nursing or breastfeeding or pumping, I'm just sharing with this with you because it's what is working for us with this baby. I'm not trying to recommend anything, but we are not pumping or using bottles. I'm just doing exclusive breastfeeding and I breastfeed on demand. And just for some reason, I find that to be easiest. I feel like everyone I've ever talked to has said, you gotta, you gotta pump so that you can do bottles so that John can feed her and you can have a break. But to be honest, um, I don't mind breastfeeding. I love breastfeeding. The hard part is when in between feedings and just holding her, it hurts my back. Uh, just after hours, you just get tired and it's summertime, so I get really hot. So that's why I was saying the best thing that we have figured out is that John will hold her when she's asleep because that could be two hours of time for me and that's a long time. So I can definitely get whatever I wanna do in that time. Because we both work from home, there's really no need to pump because I'm not leaving anytime soon. So I just feel personally, maybe it's because it's my first baby, but I just don't want another layer of thing to do. I know that when you start pumping, you produce more milk. So right now I'm just producing enough milk for her for every feeding and I wanna just keep it that way and I don't wanna have more stuff to hold and to bottles to clean and that just seems like more work considering I'm not going back to work. So a lot of people who are leaving the house, that makes total sense. For us, I just wanna exclusively breastfeed her whenever she wants for as long as possible. So we did take her to a pediatrician and we took her to a naturopathic doctor and I'm only saying this because on my blog, if you've been following me, you know that I'm very natural minded and I wanted to approach pregnancy, childbirth and you know, parenting in the most natural way possible. So I'm just sharing with you how we're doing that. We chose to see 